People traveled on the Captain Ferry's railway. More and more ships came to the harbors. Everyone had to work very hard indeed. Dirty traps, dirty sidings, ugh, silence! ordered a well-known voice. Let me tell you, the engine for goods work will arrive from Scotland tomorrow. The news was received with acclamation. The Fat Controller stared. Did you say two engines, Inspector? Yes, sir. But two engines are exactly alike, sir, and have no numbers. They say they lost them on the way. The fat controller seized his hat. We'll soon settle that nonsense, he said grimly. The two engines greeted him cheerfully. I hear you've lost your numbers, he said. How did that happen? Me mourners slowly slip it off, sir. You can know it is. The fat controller looked at their solemn faces. What are your names? Donald and Dougie, sir. Good, he said. Then your controller can tell me which of you is which. Well, he, he'll get no muck or help for him, sir. He didn't kill our names, sir. How could he? We only given ourselves names when we lost our numbers. One of you, said the fat controller, is playing truant. I shall find him out and send him home. Inspector, he ordered, give these engines numbers and set them to work. Soon workmen came to give the twins their numbers. Donald was nine and Douglas ten. When the men went away, they were left alone in the shed. No nine and ten, smiled the inspector. Here's Duck. He'll show you round before you start work. The twins enjoyed themselves and were soon friends with Duck. They didn't mind what they did. They tackled goods trains and coaches easily. We like it fine here, said Donald. That's good, smiled Duck. But take my tip. Watch out for Gordon, Henry and James. They're sure to try some nonsense. Get a mash yourself, chuckled Douglas. We'll soon settle them. Donald and Douglas had deep-toned whistles. They sound like buses, said Gordon. Or ships, sniggered Henry. You wouldn't they be making fun of us, would you now? Asked Donald. Gordon and Henry jumped in. Uh, no, said Gordon. No, 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 certainly not, said Henry. That's fine, said Douglas. No, just mind the both of you, and keep it that way. That was the way Gordon and Henry kept it. Every day, punctually at three thirty, Gordon steams in with the express. It is called the Wild Norwestern and is full of people from England, Wales and Scotland. Thank you. 
afternoon, Douglas helped duck in the yard, while Donald waited to take a good strain to the other end of the line. As Duck was busy arranging Donald's trucks, Douglas offered to take away Gordon's coaches. Douglas was enjoying himself when an awful thought struck him. I hope the fat controller doesn't find out I shouldn't be here. I couldn't abide going back. He worried so much over this that he forgot about Thomas's special coach. He pushed it with the others into a carriage siding, then ambled around to join Donald at the water column. Soon Thomas came fussing. Where's my coach? Coach? asked Donald. What coach? My special coach. But Gordon brings for me. It's gone. I must find it. He bustled away. For oh, sake, said Douglas. A more stole the special coach with the others. A mob of angry passengers erupted from the siding. They're complaining to the fat controller. He'll be coming here next. Now listen, said Douglas's driver. We'll change tenders. Quick now, do as I say. Donald, with Douglas's tender, number 10, was out and away with the goods before they came near. Douglas and his driver waited with innocent expressions. Ah, said the fat controller. Number nine. And why have you not taken the goods? May a tender is a wire, sir. The driver showed him the tender was still uncoupled. I see. Some defect, no doubt. He turned to the passengers. Please accept my apologies. The matter will be investigated. Good afternoon, gentlemen. The fat controller watched them till they climbed the station ramp. He swung round suddenly. Douglas, he rapped. Why are you masquerading with Donald's tender? 